Okay, good morning. How are you? All right, so I wanted to just jump into my day with you guys today. So we are in the process of making some coffee. And I hate wasting stuff. So this is um, yesterday's coffee that I just microwave. Water back up. Because for some reason, I can't just make one cup of coffee. The coffee maker is huge. Look at it. It's so big. All right, so I already warmed this up. And we are getting ready for work. It's 1045. We have to be there in one hour. It takes about... 15 20 minutes to drive there and I'm actually just gonna sit here have my coffee and watch a little bit of Kelly stamps before I go in the bathroom do my hair and makeup I've already got my shirt on so I just need to put my pants on I'll be back okay we're here it's work. Gotta put these tables outside. Look at all the wine. The wine, guys. The wine. Oh, it's so wonderful. Yes, especially over here. This, ooh, this one right here. That one's good. Yes, that one's real good. What else? Ooh, this one right here. That one's real good. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. This one. Okay, okay, so we're not gonna do much in here because this ain't my business. So, um, check me out a little bit later today. After work, we're going to get into a bottle and I'm really gonna talk to you about what this channel is about. Hey, I'm in my bathroom, so I totally forgot I was filming this. So, we are gonna start a new day tomorrow. It's the end of the night. I'm about to take out my contact lenses and wash my makeup off. Then I have to do my boyfriend's hair and that will be the end of my night. But, um, yeah, I'll show you some more wine stuff tomorrow. Hello, hello. I'm watching YouTube. I've been wanting to watch these, um, inexpensive meal videos lately because I feel like we're spending too much money on groceries. I don't need to like go down to $25 a week, but if we could do like $75 a week, that would be awesome. So that's just what I'm doing right now and I'm cooking some dinner for my son. It's gonna be carbonara. So I need eggs and bacon so yeah that's our uh I like to call it breakfast pasta bacon egg and cheese i know traditionally it's made with guanciale i can't ever find that in the store i'm pretty sure i wouldn't like the flavor i don't know i'll try it one day but today is not that day today i am going to try some wine so i'm gonna go ahead and show you what i've got here all right, so this right here is a Chilean Carmenere Reserva 2018. So that's um, the red. And then the white wine is Maison de la Villette Viognier 2019. I'm really excited about this one because I'm a big fan of Viognier. Um, it's kind of scary sometimes though because I don't trust everybody so I'm looking forward the wine I used to drink the Viognier I used to drink I could only find it at a shop in DC um, Viognier is really funny because it's a very finicky grape very hard to grow so you don't see it a lot and when you do see it it's expensive like um, there's a region in France called Condru 
I think it is in the Rhone Valley, but I'm not a thousand percent sure. So Condru makes wines 100% Viognier. The cheapest bottle I could find when I was looking for it online was like 45 bucks. That was like the least expensive one. So whatever, today we are gonna try the Carmenere. So give me a second, let me get my bacon in the pan and we'll get tasting. Carmenere. Here, you can look at the label. It's by Max. Maximano Arizuriz and his visionary spirit that brought him to the valley of the foothills of Mount Aconcagua, Aconcagua, the highest peak in the Andes of the Western Hemisphere. Now I'm gonna stop reading this because I don't want to read their tasting notes. I didn't think about that before I started reading it, but. Definitely want to form my own opinion about this wine. So boom, get the foil off. Get into this bad boy. Yes. Nice sound, love that sound. Let me check on my pasta real quick. Not quite there yet, needs a few more minutes. Perfect amount of time for me to taste this wine. And the glass of glass handy. Just gonna pour. That should be good to give me the flavor. That's about two ounces. All right, let's do this. There's a lot of bacon and pasta smell in my kitchen, so let's see if that uh, changes things. Now let's start with the color. This is, you can see it's pretty dark. It's like purpley, and I don't know if you can see that around the edges. No. Can you see that? No. I'm not going to spill my wine. Um, I would go with garnet for this because it has just a little tinge of brown to it, but it is very like purple and it gets lighter around the edges. Um, so legs and tears, when you swirl your wine, it um, starts to drip down the glass, whatever is left on the glass. And you can use those to tell how much alcohol is in the wine. I don't know if you can see that. No, you can't see that. So I would say this is like maybe 13%. Let's see. 13 and a half percent, yay. So 13 and a half, let's give it a smell. It's like, it's almost aromatic. You can smell a lot just swirling the glass. You don't really have to get your nose down in there. So I would say it was like medium intensity on the aroma. Get some really plush dark fruits like, definitely got some plum in there. A little bit of wood, like, I don't wanna say cedar, but I guess oak. I'm still learning this, guys, so it takes me a little while to get the nose going, but I'm going to try. Yeah, I don't know what else. There's something, there's some other stuff in there. It's not, and I don't know if I'm smelling the bacon. I don't know what's going on. Um, let's give it a taste. nice and dry, but not too much tan and really smooth on the tan and it's not gonna like dry your mouth all the way out and then you need something to drink. Good acidity, you'll know the acidity when you feel it in the back of your cheeks and it's just like your mouth starts watering. So that is really great to look for in a wine that you wanna eat with food, pro tip. Um, not much going on on the finish there, so. That's a bummer. Yeah, it finishes like non-existent. Um, let me check on my pasta again. So, um, it looks like you ordered the Maison de la Viette Viognier 2019. Yes, I did, thank you. Oh, it's really cold. You might wanna warm this up in your hands before you really get into it so the bouquet opens up. But, right now, what we wanna do just make sure this is not vinegar. It happens. Don't don't trip. Ain't nothing but a hair flip. You 
want to go down in the middle and go all the way down to the last ring. One on the first notch, and then on the second notch, you go two, comes out, you pour it with the label facing the guest, give them a little bit. Go ahead and make sure that's not vinegar for us. They can do whatever they want with it, just as long as they take a sip of it and say it's okay. Delicious, you're right. Fantastic. I'm gonna pour some for your guests. Thank you so much. And then you, the hostess with the mostest. And that's how you present a bottle of wine. You should probably take the cork off the shit before you pour it, just so they can inspect it before, as part of their whole approving the bottle process. But yeah, that's it. It's not that hard. I'm on my way to work, but I want to talk about what we drink this week. So, first thing, I kind of showed you guys the Max Carmenere Reserva. Um, I didn't like it at first, but eventually it opened up. It had really nice notes of minerality. I'm a hoe for minerality, just so you know. <laughs> I really love that feature in a wine. So it had some great minerality, like, you know, licking a stone or something. And the finish kind of came through as I drank more of it. It was like really plummy on the finish. So I definitely recommend the Max Carmenere by Eris Reese. Um, and then I had, <laughs> Viognier is my favorite grape. So I went on a little Viognier spritz. So um, I had one that was a Vin de Paz, which is just like a random French appellation. Not, it's not an appellation, it's just like random wine from France, Vin de Paz. I don't have the bottle for that anymore. It sucked. It was it wasn't terrible because it was Viognier, so it can only be so terrible. But that's not true. You're <laughs> really terrible. It was like not well integrated. Like the alcohol was over here, and then the fruit was like over here, and they weren't talking to each other. It was like a dance in the sixth grade where the boys are on one side and the girls are on the other side, and there's just who's gonna make the first move. Like the alcohol and the fruit did not want to get together in that bottle of wine. I was not feeling it. So that was a Vin de Paz, that was a French Viognier. And then I had this one, the Blenheim Vineyards Viognier 2018. And this is a Virginia wine. So I've been hearing for years that Viognier is the grape of Virginia. And yeah, I get some Virginia Viognier, blah, blah, blah. So I gotta be honest, this wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. It was actually good. <laughs> It just wasn't what I have come to love from Viognier. It was just a little, I don't even know how to describe it. It was just okay. It wasn't good. Now this one right here, I went to work last night, the night before. I went to work the night before last. And my boss was like, oh, I got this. And I was like, oh, you got that? And he was like, yes, I got this. We're gonna taste it tomorrow. So yesterday, when I got to work, he was like, okay, you ready? We're gonna taste this. And it was this. The um, Francois Villard Condru Les Terrazas de Palat. Palat? Yeah, Palat. 2017. And I was so excited, okay? Because Condru is Viognier from um, Rhone, the Rhone Valley in France. So it's a specific appellation. It's got a great pedigree, a great history of amazing white wines that are world renowned, made from 100% Viognier. So I was like, oh yeah, we gotta do this. And you guys, you know what? It did not disappoint me. It was like so amazing. I'm not gonna drink any right now because I'm on my way to work, but we had this and it was like, you could just smell like honeydew melon and honeysuckle and very floral, super floral, like acacia. And my favorite was wanting his to palatine, get all that poached pear 
and uh it was just so good and um it's a lot it's very floral it's very fragrant so when you first taste it you're like ooh, this might be too much but have a whole glass get into the bottle have two glasses by the time you get to like the middle of the second glass it starts to calm down it's full body it smells like cheese it's like creamy not in a bad way cheese like oh your feet smell like Doritos like no not like nacho cheese Doritos feet smelling bad like kind of like I don't know I don't want to say cheddar cheese but just like a cheesy sort of smell and um so creamy on the palate it just like coats your mouth medium to full body not as full bodied as I'm used to with the Viognier but Francois Villard is that dude. So if you ever see some Francois Villard, Viognier, or Condru, Condru is pretty expensive. Um, you can probably get a bottle retail for like 40, 50 bucks. That's like as cheap as it gets. Um, if you're going into a restaurant, you're looking at like 120 minimum, but uh, it's worth it. If you've never had like just a, an amazing white wine, you love florals, like, you love getting flowers, you love smelling flowers. This is the wine for you. It's full bodied, it's tropical, it's amazing. So yeah, that's what we drank this week. I am going to finish this. I got a little bit, hold on, huh? Can you see how much I have left? There we go. So I got like a glass and a half left in here that I'll take care of when I get home tonight. So yeah, that's my week in wine, and we will uh, reconvene next week to talk about why. Cause you know I drink wine every week, y'all. Okay, Masam, I gotta, I gotta keep my palate tight. You know what I'm saying? All right, have a good day.